good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, this is Tracy at TMB Arts, and today I thought we would have a go at um, painting a beautiful yellow rose. I will insert a photo here for you and a result of the end at the end of the clip. <clears throat> Now today I'll be using my um, Da Vinci number eight round, my zero long liner, and possibly my um, Princeton 12 snap round. We'll see how we go with those. And later on we'll be using um, my one inch flat do the background so we'll put that to one side for a moment okay so the rose itself is um, it's a beautiful yellow rose and uh, very bright beautiful bright yellow so I have gone with um, my Winsor & Newton yellow today and that is let me see if I can find it for you It's just called Lemon Yellow. Make sure I get that right for you. It's Lemon Yellow. I'll put all the colours and things in the box at the end. Okay, so I'm going to work... I've done this fairly dark so that you can see it. Um, and I am going to work wet on dry today just to keep a little bit of control. So... Just going to get some of that yellow. Make it up into... A nice wash, we don't want it too thick. Okay, and we are basically going to just start um, layering in some colours. I've just noticed a piece here that I have omitted. So, I'm going to put that in there. Let's see these things afterwards. Okay, so we're just going to start. Now some of these parts on these um, petals are white, well they look white, so we're going to take that and I'm just going to move it out, it's very um, pale, just blend it out to the white, keep washing the brush, getting it clean taking it through so there's just the essence of a colour and it's almost white. All right. Now the other thing I see on this um, rose that I'm looking at is it has got um, dark shading. So we must remember that as we're going along as well to put in that dark shading and it's almost um, it's almost a yellow ochre um, type of color with the yellow in it so I have mixed that there yellow ochre with a little bit of yellow and I am going to try and get some of this darker colour in through here because this is where the shadows are. Okay, and we're going up through here. Just a little bit. Clean brush. Wipe it off. Bring the shadow up. Okay. And then once that is done, um, we can put our yellow, our darker yellow over the top. So we have some darker shadowing in here. Okay. And we have a bit of it in here. Too much water on my brush. There we go. So we'll just 
make a little bit more of that up. these shadows so you just look at the reference photo that I've left for you and um, I'm even going to put them in down here for now so if you just look at that reference photo and where you see it's a bit darker then we'll put these colors in and it comes right along this side here because that petal's above this one. that's our lip that comes back round. Put a little bit through here under that one. And then a little bit under here on that one. Okay, let's see how we're going with that now. So we're going to go back to our yellow, clean it off. It's nice and bright. And we're going to come in now over this had time to dry. Okay, this petal is actually quite yellow all the way, so that's good. Remember, you are just following shapes of colour and shade. Can come right over the top of that as well so it's blended through more of our lemon yellow and coming over the top of this one and this one is quite white on top So take nearly all the paint off, clean the brush, and just blend that clean water with a very subtle hint of that lemon in it out to the edge. More of our lemon. And there wasn't much of a um, shadow on this one. When you see my arm disappear, that's because I am just wiping the excess water off my brush. Okay, so we've got lemon yellow there, but then that petal is um, is very um, light. So I'm just moving that paint around. It's got the slightest touch of yellow in it. You just don't need a lot. Just move the colour that's already there. And we can go in and darken this up a little bit. We can come back in and glaze that later on. Okay, so more of our lemon yellow over the top here. Clean the brush. So we're mapping out where our, our shading is. any time you can go back and um, increase the volume of color anytime you like just you know when it's dry you can go back in and just reinforce it again we're going to come over this one we're going to go right over the top of the 
shading. Right up the top here. You can move that shading around a little bit. That cream brush. And then we're going to blend it through because this petal is very, very light. So it doesn't need much at all. this one now. This one is quite light on the ends. You need to go in there and colour that shading so we've got the same tone right through there. It's just that shading showing under me. Okay, clean brush and then just gently, gently, gently ease that out and clean the brush again. This beautiful rose um, from my sister um, took the photo and allowed me to use it so I was very grateful for that. It was nice. It was in her garden. Okay so now this petal. And you can see by agitating it a bit you can break up that hard line. So you still get the shading there, but you can lose that hard line. And this petal, it's yellow around to there. And then we have some softer color over the top. Yellow is quite a hard color to paint with like this in different tones because it's so vivid. You have to be quite careful. So basically that's the outer side of the, the rose cupboard. Let's just go in now and get these insides covered. Make sure you cover the paper there. Come over this way. Always looking at your reference. It doesn't have to be exactly as your reference, but your reference photo will give you direction. Um, you know what is is actually um, happening, which way the painting is meant to be flowing. All right. And then we've got this little one here. And that's a curl back. light colours in there. Very dark in the middle. Push the brush and pull that round a little bit. Gets lighter. Vivid in there. These petals in the centre can be quite tricky because you just too, you tend to get lost in them. So I'm going to fill that in. Then I'm going to go back to my shadow colour. Not adding too much water. And I'm going to lay in a little shadow in here. So this is now wet and wet. So it might travel a little bit and that's okay. Wrong with that, and we'll just ease it round. So these Windsor and Newton colours are a little bit different to my um, Kuretake colours. I'm being able to lift these up again quite quickly, whereas my Kuretake is a, a little bit more difficult to to lift. So some more lemon. And we're going to come around this very fine one here. Okay. 
darker colours down in this dip here and down around in here. Clean brush, blend it through. It's just so so easy to get lost in these centerpieces. It really is, and don't worry if you do because I struggle. I struggle a lot with painting roses like this in the in this um, particular aspect. Looking into them, it's quite tricky. I'm going to get just a little bit more lemon yellow and put on here. And wipe it through because I don't want it too dark. Okay. Alright, I'm happy with that for its first coat. So while that's settling and drying, we're going to take our concentration down to our stem. And I am going to go to the um, Kuritake paints for this one. very warm here in New Zealand and the paints dry out so quickly when you're using them. Um, and for this I am going to mix um, a little bit of my malachite. With a little bit of blue grey deep. In my brush and a tiny bit of sap green deep. Not too much. Just trying to get that deep greeny grey. That's nice. Because this is the underpainting for the stalk. Alright. So I'm going to start here. And just work our way down. worry if it's not perfect and that perfection doesn't really truly exist okay now for the leaves I'm just going to use some sap green and this is just our first coat just to get a little bit of colour on there See where I have um, missed a little bit of this. This needs to be filled. Try not to grab that green. That would be a disaster. Honestly, you might be quite happy to leave your rose as is, and that's fine. Um, it's entirely up to you, but I am going to go in and um, we're going to put another wash over the top, just to richen the colours up a little bit. I'm hoping this Winsor & Newton isn't going to lift on me. Some of the colours are very nice, but um, I must admit, I, I prefer the Kuretake paints. But I thought, well, oh, they've got the yellow I want, so we'll, we'll use that. Now, a paint cons consistency is almost the same. It's just a little bit thicker, not quite as watery as it was before. So we'll start here on this one and hope that this doesn't lift anything off. So 
we're just going to come through and even though you're going over the top of everything you will still get your shading from underneath okay just remember we want some light bits so it's the same process clean the brush and blend those edges through clean the brush damp it off on the towel and ease those edges in if ever you get a place where you feel like you've put too much color on it you can get a handy towel or tissue and just go back in and lift Okay, it's not hard and it's fine you know it's, it's okay to do that okay so we get some more paint we'll go up to this one now and all we're doing really is just intensifying the color making it not quite so wishy-washy Easy, easy peasy. You can do this. More yellow, we're going to come in here. Just always remember where the more, the more yellow colour is. I think that's the trick. And we just bring this colour through. This one's very pale. keep working our way around come into here okay. use that color through Looking my iPad back on. Good, more paint. Down in here now. And all the time we're just adding richness. Just adding that richness. Because even though the ends might be very pale, you know. Flowers have a beautiful presence about them. They have a vivid colour. Of course, unless you get the pastel coloured ones. Okay. Even if it's white, I'm almost tending to put a bit of a little bit of paint there. More paint. Come into this one. Clean brush. Water and just pulling it through. Clean the brush again. A bit of a dab. some of these interiors. Let's get this one done. Okay. I could drop down to a smaller brush. I'll try and work a little bit bigger than is needed some of the time, otherwise I just get too finicky. But Colors in here are a bit stronger. Okay. You can 
still see all your shading from previous layers. Just going around tidying up any little gaps that I can see. Cool. Now if you wanted to, you can continue adding layers. That's the joy of watercolour. I'm not going to keep adding lots and lots of layers. Get rid of that though. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to go, I am going to change my brush and I'm actually going to drop down to a, um, a number two snap Princeton. Just a little bit easier. And I'm going to get my sap green. Okay, I like a little bit of that. Not a lot. Make sure that there's enough water on your brush. Then we're going to come in over the top of this underpainting. Okay, so it makes the stalk a different colour to the leaves because they usually are. The reference photo actually didn't have a stalk on it, so I have taken artistic license with this and um, done it myself. I'm going to put a little thorn here and there. And while that is still wet, I am going to grab just a tiny bit of burnt sienna. And just drop it through a little bit where it needs shading and then bringing it down. A little bit through here. Clean brush, bring it up. Good. Now I'm going to get what is called lime green in my um, Karataki colours, and it really is a light, it's a beautiful colour, beautiful light lime green. And just where we've left it here, I'm going to colour that in there. Water on my brush. It just gives a little bit of a highlight to that leaf. Remember, the trick with foliage is even if you can't get it right, variate the colours and you'll get there. It will look fine. You'll be all right. Okay, so a little wee mix now of um, the sap green and um, sap green deep in my Kurataki colours. And all I'm going to do is come through here and just add little tiny hints of the fringes that you get on these leaves that are right up next to the rose itself. It's very light touch, just dragging along, lifting up. You don't have to do this. I think it just gives it a bit more character. Now I'm going back into that dark stem green that we had in the beginning. Just to add a bit more shading through here. I say they might not be perfect, but they're, you know, it's practice, it's, um, it's getting the paints out, it's being active with your painting, that is important. Now I've got my liner brush, and I'm going to um, get a mix of our lovely yellow, 
and a tiny little bit of yellow ochre. So not this dark, not the dark. We want it a not lemon lemon yellow. We just want it off that colour. Okay, so load that brush up. You don't want it thick. You don't want it thick at all. Alright, and now we're gonna give this petal some shape. So we're gonna come out here. These little veins, you may be struggling to see those, but they are there. Okay. Long liner brushes are fantastic for this. Now this one comes from way down deep in there up and across to this point here and we get some beautiful little veins that come off I'm just getting some more paint but as you bring them up and around you give shape to that petal of it coming up and over. Okay, this one starts way down deep in here, comes up, and this way. I haven't got enough paint on my liner brush to keep separating. Oops. See, not enough, too much. Always a thing. Alright. And this one, you can hardly see any coming up out of here. We're just going to give it a few little hints because it's coming from that way. And this one. It really is these fine little touches that you do that brings the whole thing to life. I think I actually enjoy this part the most out of all the parts of painting a rose. I enjoy putting the, the veins on the most. And there's a few in here. is dry enough now and I like to go around and see if I can lift any of my um, pencil lines up sometimes you can sometimes you can't um, but that that's fine and you should probably wait a lot longer than what I am okay just takes the outside edge off If you can't, that's fine. Don't, don't let it bother you. And 
and as you get better at painting sometimes you can lift the pencil off before you start um, which is what I normally do I just didn't want to lose the line so that you could see where we were going I don't want to touch the inside just yet because it's still quite wet and as I say some of them you won't get off and, and that's fine you can embellish it you can cover them you can glaze more you can do so many things um, but it's a simple little yellow rose it's something that beginners can do don't look at it and think you can't it's just taking your time with your glazing going over um, and having a bit of fun with it now what I want to do is get my one inch flat brush and I'm going to get a bit of sap green. I'm going to get a very wet sap green. And I'm going to come from the outside here and just bring it across my page. Okay, nothing fancy. And then we're going to go for some lime. Bring it in around here. Don't be too precious with it, just get it on there. And I'm just alternating now between different greens, ones that I'm seeing on my palette, some are in my um, box of uh, paints here. And just going round. You can add darker bits. And when it dries, it will look like um, background foliage. Some people, you know, do this before, some people do it after, it's all up to you. Um, I find if I do it afterwards, I'm, I'm less sort of precious and finicky with it, and uh, it seems to work okay. Some more green, let's come back in around here. darker green down here, take it over the stem, bring it back up into here, let's mix it with some of this. Sometimes when you can go dark around your rose itself, you get a better outlook, you know. You don't even have to do this step, you can leave it on white paper and it will just look fantastic. This is just if you want to give it a background, have a bit of a shot at giving it a, a background. Nine times out of ten I leave mine white, but <clears throat> I just thought today this might be nice. Now I can see where I've missed some here. And you can fiddle around with it and touch it up as much as you like. You can get a smaller brush and, um, you know, go, in, go into your details a bit more. Um, might even want to get a little bit more lemon and not that much. 
push yourself the gap there a little bit if that's what you want because now you've taken those edges away you can do that you can make them a little bit more defined if you want to Still leave it pale. You can just add a little bit more oomph to it if you want to, just for the background's sake, really. And if you've put your veins in and you want to do another wash over the whole thing, you can. You certainly can. Um, by no means are, you know, you're not stuck. Not stuck at all. Now, if you wanted to do anything else with that, I would suggest that you let it dry completely. Um, and then another wash. Add more to the background. Um, it's entirely up to you. For now, we'll just take this off. Sometimes this is the best part. study of using flower shapes it's a study of washing in the background it's practice never get hung up on making things perfect they're practices the only way you get any better is by doing practices um, is this the best flower I've ever painted I don't think so but it's fine it's practice um, it's made me look at my yellows and um, values and things so we're always learning all the time Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe um, and leave any comments in the comment box. That would be wonderful. I will see you all next time. Take care.